Hi, everyone. This is uh, E. David Crawford, editor and chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Joining me is an international expert in urologic oncology and in bladder cancer, Dr. Daniel Petrolock from Yale University. Dan's a medical oncologist. And just the other day, the FDA approved a new drug for advanced urothelial cancer. And Dan, can you uh, tell our audience what this is and uh, what it means? Thank you, David. Well, this is certainly a really an exciting time for patients and investigators, particularly importantly for patients with new treatments for metastatic urothelial carcinoma. Just think back uh, five or six short years ago, uh, just before the approval of checkpoint therapy for urothelial carcinoma, we, we really had limited options once patients failed initial chemotherapy. Well, there are now drugs that we can use in this particular setting. Uh, Sasituvizumab govitecan is an antibiotic drug complex. I like to call these smart bombs because they specifically recognize different markers on cancer cells and deliver chemotherapy directly to the cancer cell. So what this antibody drug conjugate is, is a conjugate between an antibody, something called TROP2, which is a panepithelial antigen. And this is com uh, conjugated with a, a, uh, uh, a chemotherapeutic agent, SN38, which is a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor. Now, a number of years ago, we looked at a similar drug, Arunatecan and SWOG, uh, the Southwest Oncology Group, and found a response rate that was about 18%. It wasn't quite the response rate. It was actually one patient short of moving on to the second level. And the thought with these particular drugs, since there did seem to be some activity, is by directly targeting the cancer cell, we may be able to deliver more drug more effectively and also limit the side effects. So what this trial did uh, was looked at sasituzumab in patients with metastatic urothelial carcinoma. They could have had any number of prior treatments. And in fact, uh, some patients had four and five prior treatments uh, prior to going on the study. And uh, what we found was, was that the objective response rate was 27%. Uh, with a 5.4% complete response rate. This is the data that the FDA reduced, uh, re released, released yesterday. And the median duration of response was 7.2 months. What I think is very, very interesting about this class of drugs is we already have infortimab vedotin approved for patients who failed either uh, uh, checkpoint therapy or uh, chemotherapy. Well, uh, this drug is a different target and a different drug that's delivered to the cancer cell as opposed to infortimab. And in fact, we've had experience treating patients with both of these drugs, and there is non-cross resistance. And Scott DeGawa presented some data at the ESMO meeting a couple of years ago of a patient of ours who had responded to infortimab uh, then progressed, we had put him on pemetrexid, and then he responded to sasituzumab. So this is really expanding the spectrum of drugs that we can, can, can administer to patients with metastatic urothelial carcinoma. Now, there are differences aside from the epitope and aside from the chemotherapy agent between these drugs. Um, for example, with sasituzumab, the major side effects are diarrhea and neutropenia. The drug is given on a day one, day eight cycle. And uh, the neutropenia can be overcome with uh, giving colony stimulating factors. So different side effects, different targets. There uh, is room to treat patients with both of these drugs. And I think that the future again is extremely bright. Uh, we're developing new drugs and new targets for this disease. And I'm really excited about the future and what we can do for our patients. Great, Dan, thank you. Um, as, uh, as urologists know, bladder cancer has been sort of an orphan situation for decades now. We uh, did the, the BCG studies and got BCG approved, and we had platinum and then nothing. And there's been a concerted effort by cooperative groups, by the NCI and various organizations to really light a fire and get something moving in bladder cancer. And so it sounds like you've, uh, you're, you're making progress. You and other investigators deserve a, a, a great deal of uh, attention and appreciation for what you've done. Uh, the average urologist probably listening to this wonders, what the heck is another amniological drug in there? And, but it's another 
it's another arrow in our quiver to deal with this. We're going to start seeing some movement in bladder cancer. And uh, Dan, thanks for uh, for uh, taking the time to uh, go over this, and we'll stay in touch as new things come along. Absolutely. I only wish that Alan Yagoda were alive today to see all this happen because he would have been absolutely excited about all this. Right. And for those uh, that you that don't know Alan Yagoda, he's really sort of one of the godfather of, uh, of uh, chemotherapy in areas in bladder cancer with MVAC. And, and Dan actually uh, trained with him years ago and is a great guy. And uh, in early in SWAG, uh, he uh, worked hard to try to get some things moving, and you're right. He would be very proud to see all this happening. And, Dan, thanks for uh, continuing his legacy. Thank you.